This podcast features genetic testing for autism. Our faculty member is Dr. David Miller from the Division of Genetics within the Department of Medicine. There are several different genetic syndromes that have a higher incidence of autism. For example, Fragile X syndrome is commonly known as a syndrome that about 40% of the children with Fragile X syndrome also have an autism spectrum diagnosis. And Fragile X syndrome is the most common form of inherited mental retardation in the general population. But there are many other syndromes, some of them even more rare than Fragile X syndrome, such as tuberous sclerosis and Rett syndrome. In our neurology program at Children's Hospital Boston, we have specialty clinics for children with tuberous sclerosis and Rett syndrome. And we see that there are many patients who not only have those conditions based on a clinical diagnosis, but they also may have uh, mutations in the genes and yet they have milder symptoms, but that may include autism. And so it's important to try to sort out those single gene syndromes when evaluating kids for a genetic evaluation. In our genetics program at Children's Hospital Boston, we offer standard genetic testing for children who don't have a specific genetic syndrome when they come into the office. For example, if a child comes in and the medical history does not indicate specific medical issues and the physical exam does not identify areas of concern that might suggest a genetic syndrome, we would think that those children fit into a category called idiopathic autism, meaning we don't know what the genetic cause is and we're not sure that it's related to any genetic syndrome. That's actually most of the patients who have autism spectrum disorder. For those children, we offer standard genetic testing, which consists of three tests. We look for problems with the fragile X gene and problems with the chromosomes. There are two different tests for the chromosomes. One is called a karyotype and one is called a chromosomal microarray. Now it may seem counterintuitive that I suggested that fragile X is a single gene syndrome that causes autism and yet I mentioned it as a test that we do when we don't suspect a particular diagnosis. That's because children who have fragile X mutations don't often have any characteristic physical exam findings or medical history findings at young ages. However, it's those young age children that we're most interested in diagnosing so that we can provide them early intervention and treatment to improve their outcome. So that's why Fragile X testing is important in the initial evaluation of children with autism. I mentioned that we look at the chromosomes two different ways. We look under the microscope at the chromosomes with a test called a karyotype. That's the traditional test that's been around for many decades now. We also have a newer, higher technology test called a chromosomal microarray. In our DNA diagnostic lab at Children's Hospital Boston, we use a whole genome chromosomal microarray. So essentially what we're doing is the same thing as a karyotype except we're doing it at much higher resolution. When we use the chromosomal microarray, we can see tiny missing or extra pieces of chromosome material that five years ago would have gone undiagnosed. And we now know that approximately 10% of children with an ASD diagnosis have some type of tiny missing or extra piece of chromosomal material that's responsible for their uh, risk of autism. One of the most common uh, types of chromosome problem that has been identified at increased frequency in children with autism spectrum disorders is missing or extra pieces of chromosome 16P11.2. This discovery was first made in 2008 by researchers here at Children's Hospital Boston as well as collaborators at other institutions. We think that children who have the chromosome 16P deletion have up to 100 times increased risk of developing autism. 
but they don't all necessarily develop autism. As I mentioned, the chromosomal microarray testing could be done in a number of different laboratories, but currently all the major laboratories are including chromosome 16P11.2 in their testing for children with autism spectrum disorders. There are other genetic tests that we may consider depending on the medical history and physical exam findings in the child. Newer information indicates that children with macrocephaly or large head circumference have an increased chance of having mutations in a gene called P10 and that mutations in the P10 gene are associated with an increased risk of autism spectrum disorders. For children that have increased head circumference and a diagnosis of autism spectrum disorder, we also include testing for the P10 gene. There are a number of other genes that have been associated with rare causes of autism spectrum disorder. We don't consider those genes to necessarily fall into the first round of testing, but depending on the family history or medical history of the patient, we may consider other types of genetic tests if the first round of testing does not have any results for us. As you can imagine, the genetics evaluation and the genetic counseling that come, can come out of it can get relatively complicated. These newer types of genetic tests, like chromosomal microarray, uh, can get quite expensive and may not be available in every hospital around the country or around the world. There are large reference labs, so uh, places that don't offer this testing in their own hospital can send samples to reference laboratories in different parts of the country. And as a group, these types of laboratories are now offering compatible forms of the testing. In other words, uh, the result that you get from one lab is generally comparable to the result that you would get from a different lab. We consider this type of testing diagnostic testing, meaning it's being done on a patient who already has symptoms of a medical condition.